Modern tanks come with different shapes and features. No tank is the same as the other. But one tank is significantly different from the rest. The Merkava was built with an engine in the front and until this day it's the only tank with this configuration. The disadvantages of engine in the front configuration are clear. An engine that produces more than 1000 horsepower will create an enormous amount of heat. This heat has nowhere to go without hazing the vision of the tank operator. Excessive heat generated by the engine will affect the tank barrel accuracy. For obvious reasons, designers want to keep the tank turret as low as possible. Aiming the barrel downward is thus always a problem. An engine in the front will force the tank to have much higher shadow. And survivability. It was feared that the heat to the engine will more often than not bring a tank to a halt. And statistically, most tanks get heat in the front. So why, in spite of these clear disadvantages, did the Israelis decide in favor of a front engine? In order to answer, we must consider the threats to the modern tanks. Three kinds of anti-tank projectiles were common then as much as now. Hollow charge and armor piercing projectile are designed to concentrate all the explosive and kinetic energy on a small area, creating a small hole for the projectile will harm the tank crew. An explosive projectile will detonate on the back end. On impact, the projectile is pressed against the armor, delivering a shockwave that, you guess right, incapacitates the crew. In short, unlike what one can see in movies, tanks do not usually blow up in flames on each hit. Most of the times, the damage is mostly to the crew operating the tank. By October 1973, the Yom Kippur War broke out. The Saga missiles, RPGs, and the then new T-62 tanks caused the Israeli tanks' attrition rate on a scale unheard of before. However, very quickly the Israeli learned that as long as the tank unit would not collapse, the damaged tanks could be towed back to the mechanics to fix it. And indeed, some brigade mechanics reported fixing an excess of 20 tanks a day. That is recommissioning a quarter of a brigade on each battle day. Or, 679 brigade commander reported that on each day he was going to sleep with a battalion just to wake up in the next morning with a brigade. As it turned out, the nature of the tank hits made most of them operable after specialist mechanics work on them during the night. Without being too gruesome, a routine was established on each tank hit of clearing the tank from the former crew, hosing and fixing the tank inside where a new crew assembled to man the repair tank. Very early in the war, it became clear that manning the tanks became a problem. Israelis abroad on hearing of the outbreak of the war returned en masse and supplied some relief. However, it was feared that the level of attrition would be unsustainable. The replacing crews, which manned the repair tank, were from various age groups and disciplines. They did not know each other and used different terms when in combat. In short, in a small army, deriving mainly from reserve forces, the most important and vulnerable ingredient is the crew manning the tank. And so a decision was made to design a tank around the crew. The modern Merkava have more than 1,500 horsepower engines. Cooling that kind of an engine is obviously a challenge. Israel Tilan, the chief engineer, designed a high-volume ventilation apparatus on the side of the tank that will discharge engine heat as well as exhaust gases. In order to prevent uneven heating which affected the tank barrel accuracy, a thermal sleeve was introduced, keeping the temperature even much like a thermos. In addition, New computer systems were introduced to gather inputs from the tank surroundings and adjust the tank aim. Tank's height and barrel downward angle. Surprisingly, even though the Merkava have a front engine configuration, it is not much higher than any other modern tank. This is most probably because of the engine position and the front armor angle. Survivability. In one of the many researches carried out by the Merkava development team, 
more than 500 destroyed tanks were investigated. The conclusion was that regardless where the engine is, tank hit have the same chance of deactivating the tank. This was our solution to the front engine configuration. But what were the advantages that made it all worthwhile? The times of a large army fighting symmetric battles is almost gone. And in an asymmetric conflict, the coordination between tank and infantry is vital. Since the back of the tank was free, an infantry door was designed on the back of the Merkava. An infantry force could be shuttled to its destiny, secure and protected, bringing troops closer to the enemy lines faster and safer. This also made the evacuation of wounded become much easier. The front engine also had a superior mobility on difficult terrain, as it spread the weight of the tank more evenly, thus creating strategic advantage on terrain that was previously deemed inaccessible for tanks. And as always, we should mention the political aspect. In a democracy with a mandatory conscript army, it is easier to secure funds for a project that promises better protection to the individual soldier. Among them, politicians and decision makers, sons and daughters. So after all is said and done, why is the Merkava still the only modern tank with front engine configuration? To this I have no good answer. If one of you do, please leave it in the comments below.